If bowling on a budget had a name, it would be Tigo. More specifically, the Tigo 7 and 8. I'm still not quite sure exactly which one is which, but that's why we're here. We're visiting the award-winning MyRide Group in Advanus to find out from them exactly what the differences are between these two and what you get depending on which spec you go for. The range for both of these starts at under 500,000. If you wanted to add a little bit of extra, you could get the top spec executive. I'm driving this model because clients have snapped up all the top of the range ones. You see, Cherry have come back with a bang. With over 60 branches nationwide, Cherry has taken its current foray into Africa pretty seriously. They've got R&D centers all over the world and have recruited renowned designers. In South Africa alone, they've sold over 10,000 cars. And at first glance, the quality is certainly up a few notches from Cherries of old. So let's start with the front. As you can see, the bumper is slightly different on this one over here, the seven versus the eight. I'm now starting to get the hang of this. The lights are slightly different design as well, and so are the, the grill surrounds and a bunch of details there too. At the side over here, you've got a slightly different badge on each side, and both of them can spec with 18 inch wheels and tires. At the back, the differences are way more clear. Now we can clearly see that this is the Tigo 7 and that is the Tigo 8. And based on the size of the Tigo 8's launches, that's a 7-seater in the 8 and a 5-seater in the 7. So let's hop into the 7 Pro first and find out what's going on inside. And now we're on the inside of the Tigo 7. And if you are as confused as I am, don't worry about it. They do look very similar on the inside with some small, subtle differences. But in both of them, you do get leather on the dash, leather steering, leather on the side here, over here, on the seats. Feels very premium and nice. You've got a digital dashboard, you've got multiple screens and a whole list of configurable options. Also, to note that the screen and the system over here is relatively responsive and quick, even compared to cars that cost twice as much. You've got adjustment over here for your temperature and fan, but you've also got on the touch screen over there. I do prefer though, having a physical button to choose from when I want to. On all the models, there is a host of configurable options that you've really got to sit down and spend a lot of time getting to know this car. But with all of that said, everything is pretty intuitive and easy to learn. The Chinese certainly have come a long way in making sense to the westernized mind. When Cherry say that the cars come with everything, they mean it. You've got electrically adjustable seats, you've got rake and reach adjustable steering, and everything else you'd expect from a car that costs seven, eight hundred thousand rand. Oh, yeah, it looks good too. They say the sign of a well put together car is in how the door sounds when it closes. And these doors sound really good. You've also got some high quality materials everywhere. The Tigo also has blind spot detection for the rear passenger door, just in case a car is on the way and you've got vents at the back for climate control as well. You do, however, only get one USB at the back there. Now stepping inside the 8, and again, quite similar in feel with leather touches everywhere, but you do notice that there's a little bit of extra soft touch features here and there. One of the places are the seats exceptionally comfortable with soft little headrests that make me want to just get comfortable in this car. This one's got the 360 degree camera, which of course has got a myriad of customizable features, half of which I don't understand, but it's one of those things you'll have to sit down and figure out when you test drive the car or purchase one. Just like the 7, it also has wireless charging, but this one actually has high speed wireless charging. I didn't even know that was a thing. This is the list of features available on the Tigo 8 Pro, and these are my notes for the Cherry discussion. It is extensive, so extensive that you've even got N95 air purification system built into the car. It's also 
got a little aircon system in there to keep your drinks cold. I didn't just come to my ride Cherry Hermanos to look at these cars, I came here to drive them. I'm being pleasantly surprised by this car. So let's start with the things that I like. Number one, it's got a CVT gearbox, but it changes and feels like a regular automatic gearbox. Jaguar Land Rover and Chery have what's called a technical partnership. So a lot of the technology you find in Jaguar Land Rover offerings can be found in here, like this shift by wire setup, which means you've got more space at the bottom. It's also got a much more European feel to it. And compared to the first generation Chinese cars, this is not that. We're on this rotary way in Hermanus, and this is not the best road in this town. The car feels composed and comfortable. It's got 108 kilowatts and 210 Newton meters, and it's sufficient for a car this size. Cherries do seem to be a little bit overpowered compared to their competitors, and maybe suffer a little bit with torque on some of their models, but I'm quite happy with the power figures and the way it gets delivered in this car. Visibility out the cabin is good with these giant mirrors and you can see everything around you quite easily. I've also gotten quite used to the car. There's no surprises in here. It doesn't feel like something that's made in some obscure communist country. It feels like something that's made for the European market that is now for sale in South Africa. Interesting to note that the Cherries are overall more economical than their direct competitor, the Haval. Cherry, however, has offered a 5,000 kilometer service and a recalibration of the systems to try and bring those fuel consumption figures down after the running period. This, of course, is the Tigo 7, which is a five-seater, and you can feel the size difference between this and the 8. It feels a bit more compact, the brake pedal feel is good, engine response is very nice. It's also got two modes, sport and eco, and it's even got a setting for the steering to adjust the steering as well. Now, speaking of settings, this car has a whole bunch of customizable settings that I'm not really going to go through because there's so many. And on the top spec model, there are even more. I do like that they've done that. It means that you can really configure your car to the point where it's your car. Then, of course, there is the fact that it's got voice activation. Now, in many cars, this is quite gimmicky, but for this price point, you get to feel like you're balling on a budget by going open driver's window. Amazing. I'm not sure what else it does, but apparently there's a lot. And as mentioned, this is something usually reserved for cars that cost way more than these. Close driver's window. What makes it even more impressive is that I always struggle with my accent. Okay, yes, I'm from Cape Town, it's quite clear. But these systems generally don't cater for me. So this is quite a refreshing change. Cruising around the old harbor, the car feels composed and I can enjoy the sights and sounds while being cosseted inside here. It's spacious, it's quiet, and the only time you really hear any noise is if you put your foot down. The engine does make a little bit of a noise, but when driving like this, all I'm hearing is seagulls and people ooing and aahing for the whales. There are other cars in this segment, but there doesn't feel to be a direct competitor when it comes to the spaciousness and the value for money that you're getting for this. Remember, you do get a massive five-year warranty, which is extended to a million kilometers if you keep the car for yourself. So let's check turning circle. And, oh, that's very good. That's very good. And that's why, like I said, the steering response, especially when Driving at slow speeds like this is really nice. Now behind the wheel of the 8. And immediately you can feel, thanks to the bigger size and bigger engine, that this feels a bit more upmarket than the 7. It still feels very similar inside and still has a relatively good ride. But the speed though, once you get going, it's quite a bit faster 
than the 7. And I think therein lies the big difference. It's a slightly more premium feeling car and it's quite a bit faster. Oh, oh yeah. Power is way up on the 7 at 145 kilowatts and 290 newton meters. There it is. This might be my option because it feels like you're getting quite a bit more car, even if it, a lot of that is just due to this rear view mirror over here. And that is my least favorite feature on the Tigo 8. It's some weird fun house setup. And I'm starting to understand why the engineers went for it. It's because it's got a wide angle view and I can see inside the back of the car quite easily. So I can see what the kids are up to at the back there. But I can also see exactly what's happening behind me. I think I might even be able to read that car's number plate. See why. But other than that and these cup holders that I still don't like, it's a really, really good car. And especially considering for even the top spec model, you're going to be paying under 600,000. And this has got Volvo vibes about it. And the reason it's got Volvo vibes once again is because of the technical partnership with Jaguar Land Rover. And the reason I'm pointing down is because this all over here feels very Jaguar Land Rover. It's got a Sony sound system here that sounds pretty good and it's got nice touches and finishes with once again, really good visibility. If you want the panoramic sunroof, which I definitely do, you're gonna have to fork out a little bit more for the top spec executive model. So let's talk about that million kilometer warranty. What that means is that if you stay and remain the owner of the car, you get a million kilometer engine warranty. Okay, up at the top of the mountain, let's do turning circle. I don't think I'm gonna make it anyways, am I? Now, this is where things get interesting. I don't think I'm gonna make this, but let's check out the camera and see what the camera says. Thanks to the 360 degree camera, I can see exactly what the nose of the car is doing. And that nose is definitely not gonna make it around that corner. Another feature that's usually only available on cars that cost a lot more than this one. The characteristics of the engine remain the same and it feels very similar, just quite a bit faster. This model is 78,000 Rand less than the top spec model. And I've gotta be honest, I haven't driven that one either. Once again, somebody bought the one that I was supposed to drive. But even at this price point, even at the spec, it's still a very, very good car. It compares favorably with the new cars that it goes up against, and it compares favorably against cars that are in the used car market from premium manufacturers. This is the bumpiest road in Hermanus. And even here, thanks to these comfy seats and decent suspension, it feels fine. It feels good. The Tigo 7 is arguably the best car in its category. And the same could be said for the Tigo 8 Pro. Out of the two, personally, I'm gonna want the top spec model. But I do think these cars are worth a test drive. Home to Nissan, Hyundai, Isuzu, Renault, JAC, FAW, and multi-franchise branches, including the MyBucky brand and now Cherry 2. My Ride Group is your one-stop shop for all your motoring needs in the Western Cape and Gauteng. Visit myride.co.za to find out more.